Stop the croissant. No. What? What is even going on here? This situation with Rock and Unique. Y'all sitting up in the house eating ice cream. Okay. You know, but again, this thing with people out in the street versus at home. You know, Rock and Unique, like I said, just last season. Really, the first season, the two of them were trying to kill each other. Last season, started out a little rocky. They got better. Here they are now in the afterglow. Sitting up here, Rock is up on the counter, eating ice cream from the container. At what strange bedfellows indeed. I mean, really. <laughs> So wait a minute now. It would seem that this isn't like after Rock had their entanglement. It seems this is now like two two weeks later they've been entangling and kicking it and whatnot. So it's like he's over at the house. He ain't comfortable there. Or at least like he's there. Maintenance man situation is what it sounds like. But um... She's not quite on the same page as Unique, which I figured, like, that's what it would kind of end up being. Like, I think, like, Unique's been checking for from since, like, the first season, and I really think Rock is entertaining him because she doesn't have anything better to do. Yeah, and she's, like, stressed out right now. Um, but interesting to see them in this different environment. Like, we've seen both of them out on the street. We've seen unique to a lesser degree them at home but we've never seen the two of them together really away from the street so it's it's kind of it lends a different perspective to both of them to see them in this environment and then here we go um from the preview clips especially leading up to the start of the of the season of them getting grabbed up and so you see this thing here with like this entanglement between rock and unique I don't know, because here you have it where Unique has now gone to meet up with the fish man to try to carve out a situation for himself. Now, if you remember, before Bedlam ensued at the end of the second season, Unique was speaking to Laurel about them moving away from crack, right? Because he was kind of getting old. And we see here where he approaches the fish man, Stefano, inquiring about him like you know supplying him with heroin we um hear him speaking to Pranessa I think that's her name the child mother about figuring out a situation with Ronnie because she, he, he can't be in the house being weird with her sitting there in the dark staring at the tv that's not on and this seems to be like his plan like his thing, I guess, wasn't to move out of the game like Rock, but rather just to switch lanes, rather. But it's like, you go and you approach this guy, and as Stefano asks, like, you know, it's not something that he's discussed with Rock. I don't know that he necessarily owes it to her to discuss it with her, but I would think given what you've borne witness to, maybe like a heads up would be nice. You know, but that's the thing. It's like, these people are just going to continue button heads. I think this situation between him and Rock, it's okay for right now, but that's that seems like that's just going to become a mess. And that's even not taken into consideration the fact that he has a child with this lady that he's living with. So, we'll see. But that whole Rock and Unique entanglement Seems like that's just like another powder cake waiting to explode. It seems like a bad idea. And this thing between Rock and Kanan, it's like, but it kind of speaks to Rock's character, right? That even at this point, she knows where Kanan lives. You pull up at his house. She pulled up last episode with Howard to 
talk to him about the Burke situation. She pulls up at the apartment this episode out of the blue with a new car for him, which is really like a bribe. And the thing is, it's like, are you tone deaf about why he's upset with you? This thing of you lying to him, manipulating him. And here it is that once again, you show up, your solution, your idea to try to get on his good side is to buy him a car. You're sitting in the car with him and he's asking you about Burke and you lied to him about that. Fine, you might not exactly know what happened to Burke. So it's like you brush off, hey, I don't really know. You know, I wasn't there, I didn't have anything to do with it. I can't speak to it. The situation with Scrappy, she knows that she killed Scrappy. Right? Like she not that she gave the order, she personally killed Scrappy. And there you are lying to him again. And it's like, even let's say, put the street stuff aside. You sit in there in the car with him. Or even before you bought him the car, why didn't you just go over there, give Famous some money to go buy some food again, because you know he's broke, and sit down and actually talk to Kanan and explain yourself. You know, like, try to make things right with him by talking to him and making things right. So don't, like, try to buy his affection. It's like, at some point, you have to understand, like, you're out here in the streets and you're doing all of this stuff to buy Canaan things. You bought this house, really, I'm sure, legitimately thinking that you were buying this house for you and him. Because even in speaking to Unique earlier in the episode, she says the only people getting comfortable in her house are her and Canaan. Like, she bought that house for her and Canaan. But it's like... The house is just a structure, it's a thing, right? It's made a home by the people in it. And it's like, it goes back to the thing last season where it's like, it's not family and it doesn't feel like home when Kanan isn't there. Like, Kanan is her son. Thus far, he's her only child. Like, that's her baby, right? And so it's like, buying in these things, buying this house, but you guys have a fractured relationship, it's not going to feel like home. Why would you then go out and buy him a car instead of just sitting down and talking to him? It's like, at what point do you start to catch on that maybe you need to do things differently? It's like you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. It's not working for you. Try something else. If you've been manipulating him all this time and buying him stuff and giving him this and giving him that, at what point do you realize maybe you need to just sit down and talk to him? Explain things. Like, if you've never been honest before, if you've been lying all these years, which you have, at what point do you realize that in this relationship at least, this one here, that I desperately want to salvage, I need to do things different, I need to come clean, I need to don't manipulate the situation, don't try to control the situation, I need to sit down and tell him the truth, and let things go where they will from there. But it's like, you're just not learning, man. It's like, well, don't they say that's like Einstein's definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over, but expecting a different result? That's like the situation here with Rock. It's like, at what point are you going to learn? Like, don't try to buy his affection. Don't try to manipulate him. Sit down and just talk to the boy. But sounds too much like right.